Welcome to the home of the Gillette Stadium field crew. Their job is maintaining all of the turf and grass fields on the property. I'm Ryan Bijorn. I'm the field superintendent here at Gillette Stadium and the training grounds for the New England Revolution and New England Patriots. As far as our overall structure, we have myself, the field superintendent. I have two assistant field superintendents. My name is Tyler Vandenacker. I'm one of the assistant field superintendents here at Gillette Stadium. The thing I enjoy the most is probably being out on the grass fields. I was that kid who tried to mow cool patterns at their house when I was growing up. Just the green grass, crisp edges on logos, white lines, um, it was just something I kind of fell in love with. My name is Chris Hurley. I'm the assistant field superintendent at Gillette Stadium. I've been uh, managing golf courses for about 10 years. I work primarily on the reps field. It's a lot easier to manage golf because uh, it's just 80 year olds walking around, not like 350 pound guys. <laughs> Our main responsibilities are taking care of the grass practice fields, um, the stadium fields, painting for the stadium field, painting for practices, mowing, fertilizing, um, doing all the cultural practices on the grass fields, plowing in the winter. Gillette Stadium hosts many events throughout the year, including Monster Jam, concerts, and New England Revolution, and Patriots games. Transitioning from one event to the next takes time, lots of time. The field crew spends countless hours to make sure all of these events can take place. Sometimes that means pulling a few all-nighters. When there's a Revs game on Saturday and there's Pats game on Sunday, we have to change the field over. We'll erase the soccer lines. While we're erasing, people are taking the soccer nets out, um, starting to stage the field goal posts. And then once all that's done, we'll mat it um, for the final time before we start painting for football. That requires us painting at ungodly hours, you know, sometime between midnight and 6 a.m. Everything that we do, we're trying to track, you know, what's what's an expected timeline to be able to get something done because we always know that's gonna be the question, right? Well, if we do this, can we still do that? Everything that we're doing out here generates revenue, so we have to make sure that we can get as much done as possible. What people may not understand about what we do in the sports surf industry and especially here at Gillette Stadium. You know, a lot of people think it's just a stadium field and it's just the one synthetic field. But in reality, we've got three um, top of the line natural grass practice fields for the football team and a whole other facility with three other top of the line natural grass fields for uh, the MLS facility. When we're dealing with the football team specifically and the practice fields, it's, it's a completely different animal than when we're dealing with the soccer team. Because the team practices on natural grass, the field crew needs to adjust their maintenance plans accordingly. An example of that is the wide range of weather patterns that change daily. Just out here, just got about an inch and a half of rain this morning before practice, expecting another inch to an inch and a quarter during practice. We'll uh, tailor our, our maintenance practices afterwards to, to see what, uh, what comes from it. Well, the grounds crew has uh, a really a, a big job, you know, maintaining fields and grass in New England is a challenge. Got your rain gear today, Bears. This is one other piece of the puzzle when we're dealing with weather and weeks of a week of rain or, you know, in the summer, two weeks of 95 degrees and humidity and, you know, we're, we're practicing on the same field really, really important that the, the fields are well kept. As much consistency as we can have on the practice field, that's obviously the goal. At the end of the day, grass is grass, and we're trying to maintain at the highest quality possible services that we can. But in reality, football, the game is 
played almost entirely in the air and soccer is played almost entirely on the ground. So the uh, smoothness of the surface is equally important, but just for different reasons. For football, they're, they're huge guys. They exert a lot of energy down onto the surface. It's inevitable we'll have divots. Tim's making divot mix. So we mix up sand, soil, and seed to be able to go out for both the soccer and football teams after practices and fill divots, trying to keep the fields as, in as good a shape as we possibly can. We want to make sure that we're filling those divots, we're leveling anything out, and that, that way we're making sure there's no ankle breakers, there's no loose spots, there's no slipping. You know, we want the strongest possible surface for that cleat to surface interaction so that the athletes all feel confident in the footing. Soccer wants the same thing, but in, it's also important that that ball rolls true no matter what the conditions are. So we want to make sure the divoting's at a minimum out there. Um, we want to make sure that the field is watered correctly and how they like it. So moisture management is very important. The crew was, was either lucky enough or unlucky enough to follow us around for one of our marathon maintenance days on the uh, soccer training facility. We went out and choreified um, vertical mode, top dressed fresh sand out there, put a bunch of brand new seed out there, cleaned it all up, and then did one final aeration. And I mean, that's five acres that we, that we take care of on just those two fields. And we were able to knock it out in a day. So it had that additional four days to rest and recover. By the time the team got back, it was obvious that we did work, but it wasn't to a point where they couldn't train. They were able to get out there and train like nothing had happened. Practice makes perfect, so when it comes time for game day, the feel has to be perfect too. A lot of what we do in the stadium, um, we do based on league protocols rather than team protocols. 72 hours prior to every home game, we have to test uh, a multitude of different variables out on the field. So we're doing that every single home game. Overall, the goal is to create the safest possible surfaces that we can, whether it's synthetic turf or natural grass. It doesn't matter what we have the night before or the week before, whether it's a concert or an MLS match, whatever it is, they need a safe, playable surface. Uh, there is a, a significant amount of science that goes into maintaining the fields that we use, and we have to be out four hours before kickoff every, every single game. <laughs> Come here. Come here. And how could we forget about the most important member of the field crew? He's such a good Boyd. This is Boyd, he's our, um, our goose dog here at, at the complex. I, I was lucky enough to get him when I was the uh, director of grounds down at the Maryland Soccer Plex. He's got a couple different jobs. Obviously his main job is to keep the geese off the fields, keep them from making a mess. But just, you know, the overall general demeanor, you, you know, you're working a 36 hour shift overnight and the rain's coming down and you get down and, and then he'll just come in and you know he, he won't know what's going on and he'll always put a smile on people's face and I'm, I'm very lucky to have him here and he's a, he's a great part of the team as well. My favorite part of the job is when we present the game field specifically. An incredible amount of work goes into maintaining and, and prepping that field, especially when we have overnight flips from one sport to another. And the minute that ball's kicked off, that's when we know, you know, we're, we've taken care of it. We're going to have a football game, and we've got 60,000 people here that are going to be able to enjoy it. You know, we have to be a, a team uh, as our as a field crew. The hours are long. They're cold, they're hot. The overnight shifts, the weather that we deal with, it can really beat you down. When uh, one person's not feeling great or one person's feeling down, there's someone's always there to, to lighten the load a little bit. Um, but it's totally worth it at the end of the day when uh, you can kind of sit back and see your work and be a part of kind of history with the Patriots, being able to know that you played a small part in that but we would not be able to do what we do here if it wasn't for the staff that it's out there grinding every single day and they're, you know, they're out there painting the football field as we speak. Um, so, you know, I, I can't thank them enough. I feel very lucky uh, to have them on our staff and to have the staff that we have. And, you know, I just feel lucky to be in the role that I'm in.